Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm Serge. And I'm Sir. All right, and now we're gonna be looking at the urinary bladder site. Absolutely, so we're gonna show you how we find that and then the three big questions that we try to ask and answer at that site in addition to fluid. All right. So again, we're gonna go ahead and roll Daisy, our volunteer. She's uh, just gonna place her in right lateral so we can make this demonstration a little bit easier. And uh, we're gonna go after that urinary bladder site. Now, to find that site, it's usually sitting in the caudal region somewhere around the pelvis. But it can yep. be sometimes a bit challenging to find because we can have intrapelvic and extrapelvic urinary bladders. Mm -hmm. So we do want to use the motions of sliding and sweeping to broadly cover the region of the caudal abdomen until we can hopefully pick up that urinary bladder. So I'm just going to place the probe on and I'm going to start to sweep caudally and there we go. I can see the urinary bladder here yep. uh, in my window. So I'm just actually, once I've seen that urinary bladder, what are the questions we want to ask and answer there? First question, is there free fluid at the site, yes or no? Which means CERN is going to fan from side to side until the bladder disappears looking for free fluid. Make sure you check the apex of the bladder and you come back and check both the uh, trigone region and that uh, apex. And again, consider patient positioning. Our cat's in lateral, so we do want to angle that probe down towards the body wall. Make sure we don't miss that fluid when they're in lateral as opposed to straight in if they were standing. Once we've done long axis, we want to rotate into short axis. And again then, depending on the size of that bladder, we're going to fan and or fan and sweep to make sure we cover all planes to look for that free fluid. That's right. Once we've looked for free fluid, we're going to come back and find that urinary bladder at its widest point in short axis, focus yep. in on that, and we're going to come in perpendicular and that's going to be a measurement that we'll do for urinary bladder volume estimation, especially if we measure it serially over time. That's right. So we're going to get a width and a depth in short axis, then we're going to rotate into long axis and we're going to actually again fan off both sides until or sweep and fan until we get to the widest point of the urinary bladder with the probe perpendicular and again then we'll get a length and a depth here and using that you can look at our uh, webinars you can see how we would calculate the urinary bladder volume off the calculation of an elliptoid or sphere. That's right. Uh, and then the last thing in our intact females, uh, not the case here with Daisy, but in our intact females, we can also look for pyometra. Mm -hmm. And we'll do that by looking beyond the far wall of the urinary bladder, but ventral to the colon. So between the bladder wall and the colon uh, in the dorsal regions, we can look for fluid filled structures, which would indicate that we potentially have pyometra. One thing you have to be careful about is that colon, sometimes, especially if you're not fanning, can mimic bladder stones, yeah, so which can be tricky as we can see right there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what you want to do is make sure you fan that probe to see the colon elongate and disappear. So the colon is gas and fluid filled, so it will elongate and disappear. But if you kept it stationary, it mimics a bladder stone. Absolutely. And that is our urinary bladder site, uh, and we will uh, conclude that and move on to our next site. So until we get to the kidneys, thank you for joining us. Until next time. Merci beaucoup.